Alright then, folks. Check on Bayonet Vlog, my Napoleonic Wargaming vlog. All about miniatures gaming, painting, collecting, and history, and all that good stuff. As it pertains to the Napoleonic Wars. Been a while since I did an update. And I'm going to try and keep this update as short as I can. It's going to have a lot of discussion, however. It's going to talk. It's going to be my introduction to my next phase in my Napoleonic gaming hobby. And if you remember, I started this vlog uh, to document my hobby in Napoleonic gaming many years ago here on the channel. And it was all about 10 millimeter scale miniatures. And I painted up quite a few miniatures and had some great fun. Played a lot of different rules, a lot of different battles. I played live plays, did bat reps, all kinds of stuff. And you can check them out on the channel. They're in my playlists. Uh, but I haven't made an update in a long time. And a big reason for that is because I wanted to move on to a bigger scale of figure. And I just needed the right rules and the right manufacturer of models to really make it work out for me. Because this, folks, is my dream project. This is the big one for me. I've wanted to do this since I was a little kid and first getting in the hobby. So there's a lot of nostalgia with this project and a lot of excitement. I can't wait to do it. I want to do it right. And this is something I'm going to be doing probably for the rest of my life. But... This is what's going to bring me a lot of joy. Uh, just a little background on my Napoleonics hobby, and just to give you an idea of what I'm thinking about at this point. Like I said, I started this vlog quite a few years ago. It was 10 millimeter. It was focused on the 1812 campaigns primarily. Painted up a lot of different troops, and it was great. It was fun. However, I started painting 28 millimeter figures. Uh, shortly after I started the vlog. I think it was America More of Independence. Old Glory figures. I had a blast painting them up, and it's been a long time since I painted up the larger scale figures. Totally enjoyed it. Uh, then I came across a box set of plastic miniatures from Perry, uh, American Civil War Zouhavs, and I documented all this on my channel. You can go back and check out that project. I think it was the 5th New York, and I painted that up, and it, 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 was, it was so enjoyable that I was convinced that's the scale I need to be doing for probably everything that I wargame and collect in miniature. I just enjoyed it so much. And I think a big reason for that uh, is because when I got into the hobby of miniatures wargaming, my first armies ever were 28 mil. They were Games Workshops, Warhammer, Necromunda, and 40K. A lot of nostalgia for that scale. That's what I that's what I started painting with. And those were my first armies. And I painted up some beautiful looking armies, lots of different armies and factions for those games by Games Workshop. Uh, it was quite a while ago. But that's where I learned how to paint, really. I uh, learned my crafting of terrain skills and everything. And that's going back quite a ways. Now I painted 15 millimeter back in the day as well. And I always associated 15 millimeter with historical type games. But uh, the bulk of my painting back then was the larger scale figures. Then when I got into historicals, full tilt, uh, back to 2012, I got back into the hobby. I left the hobby for like 10 years. Uh, when I got back into it, it was all historicals. You know, it was all 15 mil, it was all 18 mil, it was all 10 mil at least when I got into Napoleonics. None of the bigger scale figures. And when I started painting that bigger scale again, there was something special about it that I really enjoyed. And that Perry set of Zouaves sold me on it. I enjoyed it so much. And when I, when I started thinking about picking up my Napoleonics again and continuing my project, uh, I decided, you know what? Let's try a bigger scale. I thought about 15 and 18, you know, the ultimate miniatures wargamer scale, in my opinion. But uh, it just wasn't as satisfying to paint as the bigger figures. And I did actually buy some Blue Moon 15 mil, 18 mil figures and stuff like that and painted up a couple units. But, yeah, it just wasn't. It didn't do it for me. And I knew I was going in this direction, 28 mil. So... I'd say for a little over a year now, I've been talking about this with you guys occasionally. 
and I haven't done anything, no shackle and bayonet updates for quite a while because I have been looking for rules. I've been looking for a ideal manufacturer of miniatures to collect and I'll show some of that here. Uh, and the details of this new phase of my hobby of Napoleonic Wargaming. So that's where I sit today. And this is episode 100. You'll see that on there. That's just, I just threw that on there. I don't know if it's actually 100 episodes, but this is where we're going to start. Episode 100, New Beginnings. And this is the beginning of my newest project, 28 millimeter Napoleonics. I'm going to focus on the campaigns of 1813 and 1814. Uh, specifically, at least at first, I'm going to be dealing with Leipzig and the battles uh, involved in that particular battle, that great battle. Uh, I'm going to show off the rules that I'm going to be focused on and the miniatures, and I've got a lot planned. So that's the backdrop to this next stage of my hobby. What we have here is Bataille Empire. This is Battle Empire. I guess that's how it's said. Uh, by the author of L'Art de la Guerre, The Ancients' Rules, uh, which I'm also quite fond of. Uh, I didn't actually do a flip-through of this book, and I still might do one if you guys want me to do that. However, you will hear me talking a lot about these rules regardless, uh, because uh, these check all the boxes for me. I've been following this set of rules and waiting for its publication and the right time to pick it up uh, for the past year. And this is something I've, very, I've been very excited about. And not just because it's L'Art de la Guerre for Napoleonics, but because of some of the concepts here are pretty spot on for what I'm looking for. Uh, some of the things that stand out for me with these rules is the fact that your units can either be regiments or they can be battalions. And there's no changes in the rules uh, to do either. You can, uh, it basically affects how big your battles look, how many units are on the table, how many miniatures are on the table. I like that. Another thing is the turn sequence. It's a fantastic sequence of play. It's interactive between two opponents or two sides. And the army lists are spectacular. They are complete. I'll show you some of them in a minute. And also another big deal for this set of rules that it has uh, is its orders system a la General de Brigade, very much like that. So it's got a similar orders system, uh, if you know what I mean. If you play General de Brigade, you know what I mean. It's got that. But the selling point for me is unlike popular games today, like uh, Black Powder, and even General de Brigade, uh, even General d'Armée, it's not necessarily geared towards very large battalions or very large uh maneuver units on the tabletop. And I'm talking like 24 plus figures in a unit. It's not geared for that, although it could be. There is suggestions on playing with units that size. Instead, this game allows you to play battles with where your basic units, uh, again, your battalions or regiments, uh, however you decide to play, are only 12 figures, typically. They can be smaller for small units, like eight, or they can be bigger, 18 figures. Uh, for a large battalion. So we're talking small numbers of figures here. Now, I call this old school gaming because I'm thinking like going back in the days of Koenig Krieg and uh, war game research groups, uh, 1685 rules, where battalions, basic units were that size. You know, I was used to that back then. That was normal for me. And I've always wanted to go back to that. Uh, you do get lots more units typically in a battle. And that's what I wanted. You know, I don't want to go broke. I mean, I'm doing this solo pretty much. And I don't have a heck of a lot of space. So going with the smaller battalion size is actually ideal for that reason as well. Uh, and you can do that with this set of rules. And this is one of the few sets of rules that I know of that allows for this. Outside of games like ESR and... Uh, march attack where your battalions are only like two bases so it's very small but uh this is more reasonable for me it's that uh 12 figure plus sized units so if that's not your thing all i can say is well you know what you can always have bigger battles i mean it looks just the same you know it's just they're divided up into smaller units you know there's that and that's actually what i prefer uh so yeah these are the only rules i found that 
would do that for me. They're also very tactical. Uh, I think there's more depth in this than General to Brigade in certain aspects, um, or at least more detailed than General Darmay. All of which are great games, you know, a different experience. But I'm going to play those bigger battles and still have, you know, units on the table that are battalions or regiments in this case. And when I say regiments, that's think uh, uh, Field of Glory Napoleonics. I believe that had a system where the basic unit was the regiment. You know, like a couple battalions, basically. Uh, this allows you to do the same thing. Uh, or use battalions. You know, with brig brigadiers and all that, and it works its way up. And there's no change in the rules if you do that. Uh, but there's a lot to this game. There's a lot of... It's perfect for scenario and historical scenario play. There's actually scenarios in here. Uh, some historical scenarios specifically to play. Uh, there's also... Uh, a point system. They can generate your armies that way, which is ideal. But I'll tell you why it's ideal. We'll take a quick look here in the back. Check out some of these army lists. These army lists, and there's a lot of them. It takes up, I'd say, more than half of the rule book. Uh, just like L'Art de la Guerre is the same thing. It's, it's got a ton of army lists. Uh, if we take a look at the French here, you can see all the different campaigns and regions uh, that the French were involved with, they have their own army list selections. French in Denmark, 1808. French in Italy, 1805 to 1806. And so on and so forth. This is fantastic. Now, these lists assume you're going to be basing your units as re regiments and you're fielding a corps. Okay. And the point values of that core are going to be either 200 points or 300 points. That's what these lists are assume. That's what they uh, are based on. So they're not based on, say, the battalion level. They're representing uh, numbers of regiments as opposed to numbers of battalions, that sort of thing. Uh, French, in the spring of 1813, it gives some example battles, bouts and and so on and so forth. And here's one that's of particular interest for me. I'll lift it up here for you. The French in the summer fall of 1813. And there's got a bunch of battles, including Leipzig, Dresden, and so on. And here, this here are the individual divisions that you can have. How many of each division, and what how many what regimental types and artillery are available in each division that you can have in this core-sized army. And again, it's assumed that this is a core, and you basically buy two or 300 points worth, whatever you agree to play with. Very much like L'Art de la Guerre, where you can play 200 or 400, 300-point battles, uh, similar kind of thing. It tells you how many of those units you can have, uh, and so on and so forth. The stats for these units are at the beginning of each section, of each nationality section. And here's the Polish division, so on and so forth. MacDonald, his 11th Corps, specific troops available to him. Here's the Guard Corps, which you can field entirely. That could be your corps if you wanted. It could be nothing but the Guard, uh, and so on and so forth. So if you like competitive tournament play, you've got that. If you like a good way to start collecting your models, this is perfect. Uh, if you don't want to base it around a specific battle, you can base it around a specific campaign or region, and so on and so forth. So these are fantastic army lists. I haven't really gone over all of them, so I don't know if there's any quirky things here or there. But, uh, yeah. So there is that. This is a great reason to pick up this set of rules. Now here's the section that where the French army lists start. And look at this. And it does this for all the nations, I believe. It's got some history. talks about the various periods uh, before it gets into the army lists proper. And it gives you this. These are the stats that you will use for your units uh, before you actually buy them. For points, that is. And look at all this. The description of all the unit types and how they might have been used or were used. And here's more stats. And this is all for French. Foreign troops tables. Look at all that goodness. And 
Imperial Guard troops, more stats, and how much they cost as well as found in these stats areas. But look at all this stuff. Look at all this information. And then it goes into to the actual army lists. This is where they tell you what troops you can have based on this region and time period. So here's your stats and point values. Here's how you put them together into an army of two or 300 points. Fantastic. If you're new to uh, Napoleonic gaming, you're set. Here you go. And another nice thing about this, I talk about new players getting into this. Here's your introduction. But this section right here starts off describing the weapons of the era. If you're new to this era, here you go. This is a good overview. Then it talks about the formations and how infantry were used in this period, how cavalry were used, uh, artillery, its performance, type of ammunition typically used, the organization of them, and the idea of combined arms and how it applies in this era. This is great stuff if you don't know anything about the era, or Napoleonics. And of course, you get a short bibliography here, which is recommended for books in French and books in English. And again, I'm not going to go through this. This isn't a flip through, but folks, needless to say, I'm pretty excited about this. I've been waiting a long time for this. I've only hinted at these roles in a few of my videos, kind of keeping it hush hush. But here it is at last. Might do a flip through if you guys want to see it, but uh, we'll see. Just let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, so I got my rules. I'm ready to go. And before this video gets too long, Thanks to my supporters on the channel, I got hold of this. This is the newest French infantry box set from Perry Miniatures. Thanks again, David. I appreciate it. Uh, and I'm going to be using these guys. <laughs> and look at this. 44 figures. Fantastic. You know why? Because that's not one unit for me. That's like three or four regiments for me or battalions. And yeah, I'm getting a lot out of this. And I also got these. Again, Perry's, and these are the medals, and these are more command for me to add to my plastics here and get the right number of uh, troops in my units, command guys in the units anyway. But folks, I'm going to be talking all about this project and showing you guys my progress. And you know what? If you're, if you're thinking about getting into Napoleonics for the first time or changing scales or getting into these new rules. Join me in this little project, if you will, and follow along and maybe you can uh, get some stuff done with me. And we'll do this together. It's not a bad idea. And I'm going to talk all about the units I'm going to be painting up. I want to do some Vestphalians and all that kind of good stuff. I want to get some foreign brigades in my collection. I just don't want them to all be French. We'll see. And yeah, so I got these. And I'll pull out one of these sprues. I think there's enough command in here for one unit. And uh, you guys, I'm sure, have seen these models. There's so many unboxings. These guys all have the long tails, the, the pre-1812 jackets, but I'm going to be using them. Uh, I'm going to have at least one unit in each brigade or division that has the long tails, you know, to show that they're still wearing the older coat for whatever reason, which is totally reasonable. Uh, it gives me an excuse to use these models. So, yeah. Boy, that's flimsy looking. That's the banner right there. That is so flimsy. Wow. But I haven't really looked at these models too much. And, yeah. So I've got a full box of these to start off with. My next purchase will probably be another box of Perry's or Warlord games. More French uh, with the short tails, preferably. Uh, and I also have some Hussars from Old, Glare, Old Glory, 25 millimeter, that I'm going to be uh, adding to this project right off the bat. So this is what I'm going to be working on first. And folks, I mention this because this vlog, Shackle and Bayonet vlog, is going to have some paint-alongs, live paint-alongs. That's right. I'm going to start doing some live episodes of this vlog where I'm painting up my own stuff, specifically my Napoleonics. And the vlog is going to be themed around Napoleonics. So if you're a Napoleonic gamer, 
I'm going to be talking all about Napoleonics, so why not join in? You're going to be able to interact and so on and so forth. If you're familiar with my paint-alongs that I do four days a week, well, one to four times a month, you might be seeing me do these. Uh, basically, what I'm doing is I'm setting aside one of my days off uh, per week to paint up my own stuff, you know, for an hour or two, you know, probably not as long as I do them with the paint-alongs because that's mostly commission work. Uh, but I'm going to be spending some time doing this. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be uh, the Shackle and Bayonet live paint along episode, whatever. Let me know in the comments what you think about this idea of mine for my Shackle and Bayonet vlog. It's going to be good fun, my friends. Uh, so that's what's going on. Episode 100. There's the introduction. So in the next episode, 101. We'll be painting up some stuff, I think. Uh, yeah, we'll see. But uh, stay tuned for the live paint-alongs and stay tuned for more episodes like this where I talk about my thoughts on Napoleonic Gaming uh, and basing and my projects and battles and scenarios I'm going to be working on and all that good stuff. It should be interesting. I hope it is. We'll see. All right, folks. That's my introduction to uh, Phase 2, I guess my Napoleonic gaming hobby. And again, folks, if you want to see me do a flip through of these rules, let me know. I think there's 256 pages. This is huge. Uh, great set of rules. All right, folks, you guys take care. Like, share, subscribe. Leave me some comments, all that good stuff. If you like what you see, consider supporting me on Patreon or uh, PayPal uh, or joining on my YouTube community as well. And... Uh, yeah, and above all, let me know what you think. Uh, all right, folks, you guys take care. Hang in there, because it's only going to get better. Folks, see you next time.